I'm waiting. Ah, oh, perfect. So welcome everyone. Hello students. Uh, hello Jorge. Uh, it's a, such a pleasure to have you uh, here today with us uh, for a very important topic on the admission uh, process. Um, uh, for everyone who are present today, uh, the speaker uh, is Jorge Delgado uh, from Brandeis University. It's the first time actually we are having a webinar with Brandeis University for, for our students, maybe for the region as well. Uh, so I'm glad that there is a diverse group of students present. Um, for, before we start with the session, I would like to ask everybody uh, to uh, post their questions in the chat box while, the, while we are watching the slides and follow for his presentation. Uh, and, um, and then we, maybe we can come back at the end and answer the questions. So you can also feel free to turn on your camera or, or mic at the end of the session. I uh, would we'll probably want to hear from you and your questions and concerns. Um, and um, and maybe uh, we can start. As I said, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, the college essay or the personal statement. And uh, as we announced in the Facebook event, uh, uh, we will talk about specific tips on how to uh, write your essay, um, uh, how to have actually a great essay uh, with your application. Uh, for just to mention, um, I always say this to my students, uh, the college essay is one of the most important parts of the application. Uh, and, uh, you know, writing, having enough time to write the essay, think about it, um, and, uh, you know, read a lot and attend presentations like this can help students a lot. Uh, the summer is ahead of us. I think this is a perfect timing for a presentation like this. Uh, so take notes for the students, take notes, prepare your questions, because uh, I think this will be a very important presentation. Jorge, welcome, uh, and the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Poljana, and good evening to everybody. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today uh, for this session. As Poljana said, my name is Jorge Delgado. Um, I am an Associate Director of Admissions and Director of International Recruitment at Brandeis University. Um, and today we're here to talk about a very exciting topic for me because it, it really is, um, you know, the, the college essay is really one of the, one of my favorite parts of the application. It is a place where um, I'm able to really get to know students. Uh, I'm able to really learn about kind of who they are and, and, and uh, not only just about their lives, but um, about what kind of, of student, what kind of person they would be in our community. Uh, and so the essay is is really a place um, to kind of showcase showcase that he, that humanity, right? That that human side of the application. Uh, and I want to start today by talking a little bit about um, kind of what the purpose of the the essay is. Um, I think it's it's sometimes often lost because you know there, there's so many essays for different kinds of applications. I know that uh, many students in, in in the region apply to the United Kingdom, right? And the UCAS personal statement is very very different than uh, an, an essay for a U.S. university. And so it's important for you to understand that um, if you are thinking about applying to schools in the UK, uh, the UCAS statement should not be used for um, the for any U.S. college or university. It really, it, it, they're meant to showcase different things. Um, and I think that using one for the other would not really serve you well in order to make a competitive application. And so really the purpose of this uh, part of the, the application is to, to really distinguish yourself, right? To, um, to understand, for us to understand kind of who you are and what kind of college fit you would be uh, for our particular program, right? I'm gonna talk a little bit about Brandeis at the very end, which will give you kind of a, a flavor of um, what the community is about. And, and I think that, you know, students that are a good fit use the essay to showcase that. Uh, students that are very interested in Brandeis use the essay to showcase that as well. Um, and it's also a place for you to, you know, really show that you're a good writer, right? Especially for our students that are applying for scholarships and financial aid. Um, the essay is a place for them to really shine, right? In addition to kind of a strong academic profile, um, what else are you bringing to the table? That's something that we ask ourselves when we're reading applications. And so that's something uh, that's important. Um, I will uh, also say that as you have questions or comments, please write them in the chat. 
Um, I'm only going to present for probably about 20 or 25 minutes, no more than that. And then I want to get to your questions at the end. Um, so please submit your questions in the chat. Um, at the same time, I will be making uh, the this, this slide deck available uh, afterwards, right? And so uh, Buljana and Dolly and any other advisor here um, can definitely feel free to share this presentation with students that either could not attend or if, if somebody that attended wants a copy of the, the slides, you, you'll be able to have those um, as well. Um, and so the question I think that a lot of students start with um, is what can I write about, right? What, what is it? As so many of these prompts are so open-ended, it's not a specific question. Um, and, and that for me is kind of what's great about it, but also what's really challenging about it, right? Um, I think that the, 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 the core of the challenge really is um, sharing something that matters to you, right? And, and that could be uh, any number of things, right? Because it's, it's, it's any number of topics, right? But the topic that I think does uh, students the best is one that really showcases what they're passionate about. Um, and, and one thing I say, it's, that it's really important not to talk about uh, things that you also mentioned other places in your application, right? Um, it's not really the it's not really the topic itself that matters, but really within that work, within that essay, how is it that you talk about yourself and kind of who you are? And so that's something that's important. Um, you know, the ability to really stay focused on that. Stay even if you're writing about a place or another person, right? Always bring it back to yourself. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to do that today. Um, I think it's important not to cover, try to cover too much, right? I mean, I think that you're given, you know, a certain amount of words, and um, I think students uh, often try to make this kind of an opus and, and then want to make it like a, a, a detailed autobiography of 17, 18 years of life and 500 words. Um, you are all better students than that, better people than that, better everything, right? You cannot condense a single life uh, into 500 words. And so really it, it is about uh, choosing a topic that you are passionate about, choosing something um, that, that you really want to showcase uh, uh, that, that's part of, of who you are that I may not see in other parts of the application, right? That's really what it is about. Um, and not being afraid, I think, to, to uh, write something personal, right? Obviously, um, it's good to stay professional. I mean, it's still a professional exercise, but sharing something about yourself is not bad at all. In fact, I would say that's encouraged because that's really a way for you to write something that you're passionate about. Um, throughout this presentation, I've sort of taken some samples from uh, 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 essays that I've really enjoyed over the past years. I've been doing this for about 10 years now, working with international students coming to the United States, and so um, I've seen my fair share. Um, this is actually the beginning of an essay that I read a number of years ago, and, and, and I, I put, this up, put this up as an example of what we call a hook, uh, which is a really interesting sort of first either line or first uh, kind of segment, right? Um, you read this, uh, and I'll let you read it, uh, you know, as I'm talking here, um, and it really pulls you to read further, right? I mean, if you read this sentence on its own, like I have it up here, like you want to know what this is about. You want to know where this student is going. And so if you think about us as the admissions officers, right, we read about 35 to 45 applications per day. Uh, we're reading full time in the winter time, probably three to four days of the week. Uh, and so we're actually processing hundreds and hundreds of applications. And so it's important for that first line uh, to really grab us, right? And to have that kind of strong hook is what we call it. Uh, and so having that in, in, in beginning, important beginning, uh, kind of eye-catching beginning, I think it's something that, that is really important. So that's why I wanted to share this particular example with you today. Um, when we talk about, um, you know, once you're, once you're really writing, right, uh, uh, l letting the reader really learn about kind of what you're thinking and feeling and what your opinions are, um, again, that's where you really get that passion from, right? Uh, it's really important to make yourself uh, the protagonist of the essay. Um, I, I read many essays about people's family members, grandparents, siblings, parents, um, and, and I learn a lot about those family members, but I, sometimes I rarely learn about the students, right? And, and I think that is a lost opportunity. Um, I think the whole point of, of the college application process to the United States, right, is to showcase kind of who you are and why you're unique. And when you start writing about other people or other places, um, it's, uh, you get lost in the mix, right? You suddenly don't become the subject of the essay and that really I think is losing uh, a lot of the power behind it. Um, I think that uh, as Viljana mentioned at the beginning, you know, using this summer um, to work on the essay topic, to start doing drafts, um, giving yourself enough time to do this right is really, really, really important. Right, uh, and I think that students, particularly, um, you know, especially if English is not your first language, like giving yourself even more time uh, to do it right, I think is 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 important because 
it allows you to put your best foot forward, right? And discussing your ideas um, with your, your friends and mentors and teachers, that's not a bad thing, right? It's an iterative process. Um, I, I think the worst essays I read are, are the ones where a student sits down and writes them all in one day and then submits them, right? We call that the December 31st essay. Um, those are not strong, right? Because they're not given that thoughtful um, overview. They're not, they're not giving good editing, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, and, and you need time. It is an iterative process. It is, it, it is about you. Uh, and so it should evolve in that same way, right? The essay that you write on your first draft is probably not going to look anything like the essay you write uh, at the very end. And that's okay. Uh, that, that's part of the process. That, that, that allows you to uh, do things like showcase your writing ability, right? Um, I always have this uh, sort of trick and or, or sort of this tip that I give to students that um, your final essay, right, at the end of the day, you should be able to take your name off of it. Um, and if two of your teachers found it just at your school or in the library or at the EdUSA Center, like if two people that know you really well uh, found it without even discussing it, they would look at each other and say, that essay belongs to this particular student, right? That's how much of yourself should be in it. Uh, that people that know you well, without even discussing the details of the, the essay, will be able to know what was in there uh, is about you and, and kind of who you are. And so I would say keep that in mind um, as you're writing. It's going to take some time uh, and, and that's okay. You know, putting it away, walking away, coming back to it a few days later, coming back to it a week later, that's fine. Take your time with it. That's so important. Um, this is not a quote by Friedrich Nietzsche, so I should actually put a question mark there at the end. But again, this is another beginning of uh, an essay that I really, really enjoyed, right? Um, the first sentence of the essay was, I hate cheese, which I will say it's actually a very controversial position as somebody who loves cheese personally. Um, and, uh, you know, this particular student was talking about a very strong opinion that they had about something that was very sort of not random, but very sort of quotidian, very, very... Uh, normal, right? Sort of day to day, um, and uh, and and so the thing, you know, I, I put this up, and I want you to sort of read it and finish reading this section here. Um, it really is about a passion, right? This student, it, one, has a strong opin opinion about this, is not afraid to let me know what it is, um, and that was that was what the rest of the essay was about, about how this student is is not um, afraid about taking positions that might not be popular with other people, right? Or even people in her peer group. Um, that was the point of the essay. And this is how this particular student began the essays, which I thought was very interesting. And so uh, in talking about being a, a strong believer, having strong opinions, this was a particularly strong way and kind of an interesting way um, to begin an essay, right? So that, that's kind of why I share it. So this idea of a hook, I think is interesting, but again, what you say with it, um, I think is so, so important. Um, I uh, can't say enough about editing, right? Editing, I think, is, is, is another uh, part, is a sort of a subgenre of the essay writing that I think often goes, um, not ignored, but I think that um, students often leave this till the very end and believe they can edit an essay in a single day or just a few hours. Um, editing is something you have to do well. Editing is probably something you have to do more than once, right? Obviously looking for errors in spelling and grammar. Uh, making sure that the tone, the organization align with your idea. Um, reading it aloud, I think, helps, right? I think a, a formal academic paper uh, is going to sound very differently than a college essay should sound, right? Uh, your voice should be in it. When you read it aloud, it should sound like who you are. Obviously, again, still keeping it professional, still it being a work that you're very proud of, but it should sound like you. Um, uh, it shouldn't sound like anybody else. Um, and I think this idea of does it answer the question, right? Some questions are very broad uh, and open. And, and again, we talked about how that's challenging and, and, and you can go a lot of ways with an answer, but sometimes essay prompts can be very specific. Uh, and so make sure that you are answering the question, right? Uh, and a lot of the times for, for the supplementary essays that a lot of universities have, they're very specific questions. And so I would say answer the questions. Um, and that sounds like really basic advice, but sometimes I get students that, you know, want to use other essays for these particular prompts, and that's fine if you want to rework them. Um, but sometimes I just get essays that don't really answer the question that we're asking. Uh, and so that's just like a little, not frustrating, it's just it's a sort of a mi missing the mark a little bit, right? Um, again, setting this, the first draft aside for a few days is something that's very important um, because it lets it sort of breathe. It gives it, it gives it time to mature. 
Um, and, and when you're asking other people to help you edit it and, and help you make changes, I think that this is really kind of the most important thing that I could say about the editing piece is do not give people power to change the essay. Right. Um, you people work so hard on their on their college essays, on their personal statements and they you know, work drafts and things like that. And they give it to somebody else and then they let somebody else make the changes. All that hard work that you you put into that piece um, gets erased because somebody else is changing the words, changing your voice. Um, I always suggest that for editing, students actually print out if they can the, a, a copy of the essay or show it to somebody on a computer screen, have them read it. Right. So just like sit there and have the person read it. Um, and then have them ask you questions. Have them ask you questions about the piece, have them give you feedback verbally, uh, and you sit there uh, either on your computer or with a pen and paper and take notes about the, the kind of the edits, the feedback that they're giving you. And then you should be the one that goes back and changes the essay, right? Um, because again, that really keeps you in control of the voice, that really keeps you in control of the ideas um, that you are, uh, are putting down on paper, which is, is really the most important piece. Uh, and sometimes you may decide not to change something and that's perfectly okay, right? This is a piece about you. This is something that, that, that should talk about kind of who you are and, and, and what you're passionate about. Um, somebody might have feedback and say, well, I don't really like this line or, oh, I think this sounds kind of strange, but you might read it and, and decide that you really want to keep it. And again, that's totally fine. Um, it's important not to also over edit. I, I think that students also think that it needs to be like immaculately perfectly written in, in, in you know, the best grammar, the best English grammar that exists. Um, and, and while I think it needs to be professional and you do need to, to aim for, for, you know, optimum spelling, grammar, um, it, it does not have to be over polished, right? Because I think at the end of the day also, uh, uh, the way that, that you will write um, will come through and there might be some mistakes, but that's okay. Um, I think that the imperfection of it, I think, is also something that, that we value because it, it, is, it adds to that kind of humanity of it, right? Um, there's a good balance there, though. I would say not editing is not an option uh, or not spell checking is not an option, but also do not overcorrect uh, and do not over edit an essay. So that, that's something that I would say. Um, when talking about kind of what it should not be, right? I've talked about some things that, that, that I think are, are helpful in an essay. Uh, when talking about kind of what it should not be, uh, it should not be a resume, right? When we talk about the common application, I don't know how many of you have logged on yet, but the section immediately before the personal statement is going to be the section about your extracurricular activities. Uh, so sometimes I get, uh, you know, essays from students that just like list all the things that they do. Um, and it just repeats the section I just read. It's sort of kind of boring, to be very honest with you. Uh, just kind of in a narrative form. So instead of giving me a resume, people just take their resume and put it in a narrative. And that's not helpful to, to learn about who they are. Um, and I, I mentioned this earlier, right? it shouldn't serve as a comprehensive autobiography. There's no way you can do that in 500 or 600 words. Your lives have been uh, too interesting, too full of nuance. And so really, it's important for you to pick one or two things about yourself that you really want to um, uh, move forward with and present, uh, and you should move forward with that honestly, right? Um, I think it's important to be, uh, to have confidence, right? You want to have confidence in yourself and who you are, but don't, don't, ne don't necessarily be arrogant uh, or pretentious. I think sometimes students kind of overcorrect on that side, like, oh, I must be very confident in the essay. Uh, and sometimes it's a little too much, right? You got to kind of dial it back. Um, and this idea of it being verbose, again, sort of ties back to what I said earlier. There's no need for you to sit down with a thesaurus or thesaurus.com and write this essay, right? To make it sound more uh, academic or make it sound uh, sort of smarter. I get that from a lot of kids. Like, should I sound smart in the essay? It's like, yes, but that does not mean using a thesaurus, right? It means um, really being honest about kind of the, the ideas that you want to convey. Um, that's something that's, I think, really, really important. And I actually have a, 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 an example uh, about this sort of resume piece. I think that's important, right? This is actually uh, an, at the beginning of an essay um, that I read. And again, I want you to compare this to what I showed you before, right? Um, this, again, starts by talking about what a student is doing and which is like, okay. Um, but then it really is just, just a list of activities um, that is laudable, right? They're very interesting. And I think this, this is a fantastic thing to, 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 to showcase, just not necessarily in the essay, right? This can be put into a resume. We read resumes all the time. I know that uh, Education USA especially um, uh, sends great, you know, resumes that are formatted, like, that's awesome. We look at those. Um, put this information in the essay. Uh, 
use this space, the essay space for something else, right? So I would say that the resume, uh, resume all day, that's what I call it. That, that's, not, that's not really worth it because it's a wasted opportunity for you to say something else about yourself, right? Um, a common approach, I wanna share sort of some common approaches that I think are very helpful for students. Um, a lot of the prompts talk about describing an event or an incident or a moment that like either changed you or was very significant. Um, don't hesitate to tell a good story, right? Uh, it could be the entire essay could be a story, and, that, and that's fantastic. Or maybe an anecdote at the beginning. Um, what are your thoughts and feelings around the event? You reflecting on it. Um, what, 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 what action are you telling in that story? I think that storytelling is such a fundamentally human thing, right? Uh, when we get to know each other uh, as people, when we're one-on-one, -on -one, um, one of the things that we love is, is sharing stories. That's one of the things I've missed most the last sort of 90, 100 days of being here at home is that I haven't really had a chance to, to sit down in front of a friend of mine and hear a story. Uh, and, and so I think these essays are a wonderful vehicle to share stories about you and your life. Um, make sure that they have an arc, right? A story has a good arc. It has a protagonist. It should always be you. Uh, it always has a challenge, something to overcome. It always has an end. Um, telling a good story in these essays, obviously about you and your life, I think is a fantastic approach uh, to share something about yourself, right? I think another um, kind of common approach is this idea of, of having sort of like a, a place or a person or, or environment that you talk about. Um, and we, we, we learn about thesis statements all the time, right, in essay writing. And I think that that person or place should set up your thesis statement. Uh, it should not be your thesis statement, right? Talking about your grandfather that you were very close with, whether they passed away or not, um, uh, should not be the thesis statement. It should be, what about them influenced you? Or what about you uh, uh, really kind of mimics them that then plays out in your life, right? So that personal place, that external thing should set up the thesis statement, but it should not be the thesis statement. And so that's kind of a nuanced distinction, but I think it's really important. Um, and again, going back to that focus, who are you? What are you passionate about? Even if you're talking about external things, I think it's really important to understand that piece. This essay is about you. Right, uh, and it's important for you to 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 be creative. And then if you're if you're funny and you can be funny in the essay, that's great. Right. If you're not funny, and, you, and don't try to be funny in the essay. Right. That that's the one thing. Um, the essay, I think, in particular, and really the whole college application process, uh, is really an exercise in self advocacy. Right. In saying this is who I am, uh, this is what I'm about, and this is why I deserve admission to your particular program or your particular university. Um, it is not a time for you to create an image of who you think you should be, right? It is not a time for you to create an image uh, about who you think your counselor, uh, who, who you think your, your counselor thinks you should be or, or who you think your parents think you should be, right? Um, don't do that, right? It's about who you are. Uh, it's about saying, this is who I am and this is what I'm about. And so it's about walking, running, sprinting toward yourself. Uh, in a way that that is really honest and true, right? And I think this essay is a wonderful uh, kind of exciting example of that, um, that I would say uh, allows us as, as the readers, as the admissions officers uh, to get to know you, right? And, and hear something about you and not just tell us what, and then that's sort of the last bullet that uh, I put there, but tell us why, right? We, we get a lot of what in, in a resume, what are you involved with? What clubs are you in? What do you do outside of school? Um, a lot of the things that we want to know are also why, right? Why did you start that club? Uh, why do you spend so much time at that particular community service organization? Why did you study so hard for that Olympiad uh, that you were, uh, you know, so, so good at and, and maybe won or, uh, or placed it, right? That why is so important. And the essay is a wonderful place to tell us about that why. And it is in with that understanding of why you do things um, that we are able to, to really see if you're a good match, right? I'm going to bring it back to the beginning and talk about, um, you know, are you a good fit? Are you a good match to the university? Uh, and so I want to share a little bit about Brandeis to see if you guys, you know, think that you would be a good match. But in learning about universities, uh, you also can, can, can write essays that, that are better tailored to that school, right? By understanding about the history and the values and what a place is about, it allows you to talk about why you want to be a student there. I think in a different way, right? And a place like Brandeis is not for everybody. And, and, and I will say that every single visit that I do, and I, I think I said that uh, when I was with Dolly in, in, in Tbilisi last year, uh, Brandeis is not a school that is right for everyone and that's okay, right? It's about, it's about you learning if the school is right for you or not.
Um, we are a school that is not huge, right? If you're looking for a huge, let's say, public university, we might not be the right fit for you. We only have about 3,600 uh, undergraduate students, but we are a school that's very international, right? 21% uh, of the school is international, almost 100 countries represented. Uh, we are a place that, that really focuses on this idea of giving students a strong, um, what I would call balanced experience between the liberal arts and between research opportunities, right? Uh, we give you uh, about 50 different academic programs to choose from, uh, but at the same time, you, you get a lot of hands-on opportunities to do things like research, take advantage of our uh, student organizations, do a lot of community service, right? Uh, Brandeis is a place that is very much driven by a mission, right? We are a values-driven institution. Um, and so that's something to, to remember as well, right? As you're writing those essays, like, are your values, personal values, uh, those that align with the values of an institution, right? Uh, Brandeis, as I said, is a place that is really proud to be an academic place, right? Uh, we have this kind of focus on academic excellence where our students are like excited to learn. You, know, you want to take a double major, you can do that. That's exciting. People are excited uh, to do that. You want to combine programs, right? Uh, maybe you want to do biology and philosophy. Maybe you want to do economics and business. You can do those things. Right? People are excited to learn with us. Um, this idea of critical thinking, I think, is really important. Right? It's the foundation on which I think many of our students really find that success. Uh, and for us, that's something that's important. And so when students talk about critical thinking, talk about uh, uh, having an analytical mind and, and, and being challenged in a classroom, that's something that, that's important that we want to hear about uh, in an essay, right, of why students may be interested in Brandeis. And I think that there is also this sort of deep-seated commitment to, to giving back. Uh, to, to making the world a better place. And that sounds kind of hokey, but for us, it's true, right? We are a community um, that I think takes a lot of care and a lot of compassion in the way we interact with the world. Um, I, I mentioned before, I'll actually show you again, um, you know, over 60,000 hours of community service. Our largest student group is actually a community service organization, right? Uh, and, and I think that for us, it's something that's really important because it allows our students uh, to really give back, right? To, to be committed to, to, to repairing the world and giving back to communities. And so, it, you know, I mentioned this because these values, uh, again, should really help you in your research uh, and should really allow you to, to write strong personal statements for each of the universities. It takes a lot of research. This is why it takes a lot of time uh, and why it's good for you to be starting with these early over the summer, right? That's particularly important. Um, I wanted to share a little bit about um, our application process, particularly because of this idea of holistic review, right? Uh, this idea of holistic review means that we are reviewing all parts of your application. And so, yes, we are looking at your strong, uh, you know, let's say academic profiles, right? Whether you submit testing or not, and I'll talk about that in a second, uh, the kind of academic program that you have, whether you have a choice in it or not. Um, you know, some, some curriculum are, are very strict, right? And you take a lot of uh, different courses, and, and those are the classes that you take. You don't have a choice. Uh, we understand that, but others allow you more electives, allow you your choice. Uh, and so we're going to be looking at all of those things. When we talk about holistic review, it's about looking at all components of an application, academic performance, a personal profile. Um, and when it comes to the personal profile, the essay is a big piece of that, right? Your recommendations from your counselors and teachers, uh, other recommendations, your essay, an interview, right? If that's something that's part of a, a, an application, all of those things we're going to be looking at in a balanced way, uh, just like we're looking at your grades and your curriculum and your test scores in a balanced way, right? Uh, and when it comes to test scores, it's actually very exciting. This year, we have expanded our test optional policies to include international students. And so for the first year ever, uh, for fall 2021 and beyond, uh, Brandeis is going to be a test optional university, right? Uh, we've been thinking about doing this for a few years. We've been test optional for U.S. students. Uh, ever since 2013. And so this was the year to really expand those possibilities. Uh, students will be able to apply uh, either with an SAT or ACT. We will have other test optional policies, whether it be AP exam results. If you're part of an IB program, we'll be able to uh, accept those predicted scores. Uh, and if you uh, have none of those options available to you, we will actually, we also accept what we call the graded analytical paper, right? And so this is a, um, a, a long uh, expository piece of writing in English. Uh, that students will submit in lieu of their testing. And so if you believe that this, this essay essentially, um, uh, that is an academic essay, can, can replace your testing, uh, you can replace it with that as well. 
Uh, for English proficiency, we will accept TOEFL and IELTS. Uh, we will also uh, be accepting the Duolingo English test, which you may or may not know about, but uh, Duolingo is a wonderful option for students to submit English proficiency exams. You can do it right at home. You can do it at your uh, edu EduSA Center. Um, I know that Education USA is actually working very closely with Duolingo, and so you might have all already heard of it. Uh, but if not, I can certainly put you in touch. Uh, I'm actually doing a presentation, a joint presentation with Duolingo uh, for the Western Hemisphere uh, advisors uh, and competitive college clubs uh, in just a few weeks. Uh, so I'm very excited for that. And so um, I want to actually pause here. I'm going to share quickly my contact information. You can feel free to take a, um, a picture of the screen there. Um, I will also share this in the chat. Uh, but I now want to get to your questions, right? I, I know that, that you've been uh, sort of chatting and, and, uh, and sending questions, hopefully. Um, and if you haven't, please feel free to, to, to add your, your, your questions now. Uh, I'm going to share my screen, actually, really quickly. Um, and that way, you, I think, will be able to see me a little larger. Um, so yeah, feel free. I'm going to uh, look at the chat now. Uh, please feel free to, to sort of ask your questions kind of as, as we go. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope this, this was informative. But let's see what kind of questions you guys have in the chat here. Let's see. In your experience, what type of essay works better? A general recap of the student's experiences and motivation or a retelling of a formative situation in the student's life? That's actually a great question. That sort of goes to a little bit of what I was talking about earlier. Um, it's not that really one is kind of preferred over the other, to be very honest. It really is about how a student frames it and how a, a student writes about it, right? Um, I don't think that kind of like a, a comprehensive retelling, uh, you know, if it's done very well, I think that it, that can be very informative, right? If, uh, if I get insight into a student's not only life, but kind of their motivation, their ability to overcome challenges, right? Uh, their, their kind of thirst for education, that's something that I think is important. Um, but I think that at the same time, um, you know, if you sort of take a deeper dive, let's say, let's say, like a, a, a discussing just a single formative situation, whether it's academic or non-academic, again, it's really how the student writes about it. So it's not that one is preferable to another. Uh, it really is, let's say, in one particular student, like which can the student do better, right? Are they going to be better at kind of having that overall retelling, or can it? Are they going to do a better job with really just talking about kind of one thing? And sometimes that's just dependent on a student's writing ability and, and kind of their character and, and how they are um, they are as 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 uh, as individuals, right? Sometimes people have an easier time writing about big picture things. Uh, sometimes uh, people have an easier time writing about individual anecdotes and stories, and so um, that's something that's important to assess as well, right? And that's kind of more to the advisors, but I think that's also good. Uh, for the students to hear, right? That, that if you're a better writer about individual stories, maybe that's what your essay should be about. It just depends um, on kind of who you are. So um, uh, somebody asked a question about the IB, uh, a little bit more about the IB. So maybe that was in relation to test optional. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. If it wasn't about that, um, then just clarify, and then I can talk a little bit about the IB as well. Um, so for us, the IB comes into play, well, really in two ways, right? Um, the first is going to be for academic rigor. Like we understand that IB programs are very rigorous. Uh, IB programs are also very well-rounded programs. Obviously, you're taking those six courses in those course areas. Uh, you're also taking, if you're a full IB diploma candidate, obviously your CAS, uh, you're writing your extended essay. Um, that's something that's important, right? And so we know that IB programs can be rigorous and they prepare you very well. If you, if you, if you do well in an IB program, they prepare you very well for schools like Brandeis. Uh, and, and so that's something um, that I think is, is important to know. Uh, and so we look at an IB as a rigorous curriculum. So I think that for, for the admissions piece, I think it's helpful because then we understand that a student can have success um, in a rigorous academic program. Uh, for our test optional piece, right, uh, a student can actually, in lieu of submitting their uh, SAT or ACT, uh, a student can submit predicted IB scores. So we ask that either from a college counselor or an Education USA advisor or an IB coordinator uh, that the, that last year of study uh, that, a school, that a student submit uh, predicted IB scores and you can actually replace your uh, SAT and ACT scores uh, with those IB scores. So that's something that is helpful with the IB as well. Um, let's see, another question was, how many words should an essay usually have? That's actually a good question. Um, I think anywhere between 500 to 700, I think is, is, is 
kind of average. Um, it can be longer, it can be shorter also, um, you know, but, but I would say if it's too short, you don't, you're sort of not really using that space appropriately, right? Um, I think that the, the common application gives you kind of a guideline that I think is around 500 to 700. And so uh, definitely look that up. I'm, I'm not 100% sure of that. But um, if, you, uh, uh, if you look it up, I think the common app um, guideline, I think is, is right about spot on. Um, I will caution about sending essays that are like way too long. Uh, and, and what I tell students is, you know, again, I, I shared, we read about 35 to 45 applications per day that's a number that I have to hit no matter what in order to make my target, right? And so the longer the essay, I will read it all, yes, but I will read it faster. Uh, and so, you know, it's important for, for you to give me an essay that I can really take my time with and really read and get to know you. And so um, or just a caution on, on sending essays that, that are, are too long. I would say that that's uh, sometimes not a great thing to do. Um, another essay is what is the difference between the college essay and the resume? That's a great question. So a resume um, really should be kind of a high level view of all the things that you're involved with and um, the skills that you have and then the interests you might have. Um, I have seen some wonderful essays and, 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 and uh, I'm gonna give Dolly kind of a shout out here. I have some from, from students in her center and I, as, as I have from other uh, at USA centers uh, that uh, you know competitive college uh, students uh, that um, have sent great resumes, right? That give us an overview of kind of uh, language skills and extracurricular activities and, and, and maybe some awards that they've won, like that's something that, that is helpful. Um, so that's what a resume does. It gives us kind of like a, an overview of all the things that, that you've done, right? An essay uh, is a little different because an essay really, again, goes back to that kind of storytelling, right? An essay tells us a story and as an essay tells us a little bit about kind of who you are. Uh, as a person. Uh, and so an essay may just focus on one individual time of your life, uh, one individual uh, story you want to tell, uh, whereas a resume is really kind of a, a larger picture, kind of more broad overview um, of, uh, of kind of who you are and in, in, in the things that you've been involved with. So that, that's a great question. Um, another question is, can we take one thing from our, our CV, our resume, and expand in the essay and talk about how it reflects us and how it changed us? Absolutely. I think that's actually a great thing to do. Um, you know, the resume, I think, is something that you guys can do early on. It's a great way of organizing kind of your profile, right, and saying like, okay, this is kind of all the things that I've done. These are all the things that I'm interested in. Uh, and then when you talk about an essay, like, let's say you pick one thing that is like the most meaningful to you. Yes, it can be in the resume as long as it's really expanded in the essay, as long as I learn more about it in the essay, that's something that you can certainly do, right? Um, another question here is, is about advice um, on how to choose one or two moments from the whole, from somebody's whole life that will be appropriate to share in an essay. Um, what are your thoughts about what should be uh, in the, listed in the essay? Again, I think it's hard for me to, 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 to really give like exact guidance there um, because the essay tends to be very open-ended, I think that the possibilities are, are almost limitless, right? Uh, and I know that that's what's hard. I know that that's what's really challenging about it. Uh, but what I would also say is that there is no one right answer, right? For, for the essay, there is no one right answer. And so you should not be seeking what is the, the right answer, even for you. Um, you will have a number of things to write about. You'll have a number of moments to write about. Um, which one you want to focus on, that's really the question, right? And, and I think that's what's hard, I think, with these essays is that there is no one right answer. Uh, and even with individual students, there is no one right answer. Uh, and, and I think that when you take the time to think about the possibilities that you could write about, you're going to have many. Uh, and that's great, right? Uh, I, I think it's better to have more choices to write about than not enough. Uh, and so as you're looking kind of at your life, at your experiences, at what you're passionate about, um, really focusing on that piece uh, of, of which one of the many good choices that you have you want to take advantage of, that's how you should think about it. Uh, the, 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 you're not just seeking one. You're selecting one of many good options that you will have. Um, Let's see, another question was about uploading some IV portfolios to the application. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that as supplementary information, you could certainly do that. Uh, for our test optional piece, actually, we have a number of students that for that gap, that graded analytical paper, will submit a graded copy of their, um, uh, a draft of their extended essay. Sometimes that's very helpful, right? Uh, that's a, a very strong piece of, of writing usually. Uh, and so, yeah, you can definitely submit um, either for the test optional piece or as a supplementary piece. Uh, parts of your IB portfolio. 
let's see, another question here um, about academics and competitions or, or the major we will probably study. Or is it maybe a bad idea since there are other places you can find the academic achievements? Yeah, I would say if you're just listing the academic achievements, probably not the best thing to do in the essay, right? If you're telling a story about like an Olympiad you went to, if you're telling a story about like a science fair that, that you participated in, and there's like more to it than that, then yes, I think you can certainly write about that. But just listing kind of your, your academic interests and, 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 and those activities, probably not a good idea. It sort of more goes toward that example that I showed you of the, the student just listing a lot of different things, right? Um, so if you can um, sort of offer more about that, I think that, that you can certainly write about it, but not just listing it. Um, let's see another question here about optional prompts and the impact of COVID. Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah, thank you, Dolly, for asking that. Um, the gap year students, mm, what type of information? Yeah, um, so I will talk about COVID and about gap years. I guess those are, those are the two questions. So for gap years, I think it's really important to be really clear about what you did, right? Um, there's kind of an additional information section. Even if you just take sort of like brief sections, even just bullets, right? And say like, oh, like I graduated in July. From August to November, I worked, right? I worked, I earned some money, I lived at home from December to February. I had an internship where I did this, where I studied a language or I took a trip. Um, even if you just do it like that, accounting for your gap year in that, even in like, it's not limited, but even in that short way, in that additional information section, super helpful, right? Because then we have just one place where we can go and look and see like, oh, okay, this student graduated one year or two years ago, and this is what they've done since. Particularly for COVID, um, the, COVID has upended the world, right? COVID has changed so much of, 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 of how we live our lives. Um, I think that particularly with this college application process, uh, and, and I am going to speak for my colleagues at other universities, especially other selective universities, um, there is no expectation for, for you to have done all the things, right? That, that, that's what I say, that, that a lot of students feel like they must do all the things they must have uh, and become part of, of this kind of cult of productivity of, oh, you didn't, you were homeschooled or, you know, you did distance learning or you have all this free time, right? Um, you didn't learn another language, you didn't program a code, you didn't like build a computer, right? Um, there's no expectation uh, for you to have done all that. There were many areas that were very hard hit. Uh, and even areas where, where, where the, the, the virus did not cause huge disruptions, right? In, in, in as far as health and in, in, in the lives that it took, um, it was still very stressful. It was still a stressful time in this world, right? And so th there is no expectation for you to have done any particular thing, I think. Anything you did to take care of yourself, to continue showing academic curiosity, um, uh, to just learning and, and, and being uh, somebody that was still engaged with the world. I think anything like that uh, is going to be helpful. And so don't feel the need to answer the COVID essay question, right, just because COVID happened. Um, this, this pandemic is something that will pass. Uh, and and the, the choice of where you will go to college is something that will affect you for the rest of your life, right? Uh, and so while this has had monumental effects, this pandemic has had monumental effects on, on life for students, educators, everywhere in the world, um, it is something that will pass. And so it's important for you to keep that in mind and the fact that this process of choosing a place where to go to college and what university to attend uh, is also a really important choice that will affect your life, right? Uh, and so take take the, that out of the the COVID context. Um, it, it's not they're not fully overlapping, right? It, it is something that affects you, but not necessarily um, 100%. Um, let's see a question about an undeclared major common in, in at Brandeis. Absolutely, uh, I think about half the students coming in um, have no idea what they want to do, right? And that's fantastic. Uh, and, and so um, I think that. When you come in as an undeclared student, even when you come in with a declared major, right, or a declared academic interest, uh, you can still explore a curriculum, right? About half the students uh, don't know, and then the students that do know, about half of those will change their mind. Uh, and so that's something that's great about a place like Brandeis. This is just strong liberal arts tradition that you're able to really explore uh, in, in our curriculum. Yeah. Um, let's see, uh, students writing about past mistakes or unfortunate events. Uh, do you recommend writing about it or not? Again, it's really about how you do it, right? Uh, I think students talking about what they learned from past mistakes, what they learned from that kind of thing, uh, it's really, really important. Um, and, and, and if you're going to write about something that is, that is, that 
not necessarily negative, but just like a challenge that you have, like a growth area, that's fantastic, right? But again, it's always tying it back to how you grew, how you changed, how you overcame all of that. Those are things that I think um, are gonna be very important. Um, another question about if I recommend starting the essay with a question. Um, that's, a, that's actually kind of interesting. I, I think that I've seen students do that. I think asking the right question and then uh, I think in how you answer, it's all in how you answer it, right? I think if you start the essay with a question, I'm going to, I'm going to want to know how you, what the answer is. Uh, and so uh, I think that, um, you know, that is, a, that is actually an interesting way of, of, of starting an essay. So if you can do it right, I would say that that's a great way. That's from Zorica. Um, I see a question here from Danilo. Uh, what are your thoughts about answering a general question from a personal point of view in our personal essay? I think that's the way to go. Um, you know, I think that, again, you know, bringing that personal point of view, bringing that perspective from who you are, um, I think that that's the, the key to the essay, right? What, what, what insight can you give me as someone who's likely never going to be able to meet you in person or even on Zoom or, or on Skype? Um, what insight can you give me about who you are through that, through that writing, right, through that essay? Um, that's something that's important. Right, uh, and then Anita, I want to end with this question here. I know I've, I've sort of taken up more than my share of time here, but uh, she asked a good question. She asked, you know, can a student use the same essay to apply to many universities? And I would say, generally, the answer is yes. Right, a common application essay is one essay that you send to multiple universities, so that's great. Um, I think many universities also have similar supplementary essays. Right. Uh, we ask you why you want to go to the, the, our particular school. Those obviously need to be uniquely written, right? The why, why essay for Brandeis is going to be very different than the why essay for another university. So those you need to write individually. But sometimes universities have supplementary essays that have similar questions. Uh, and so you can take something that you've written and uh, apply it to another university. Again, just make sure that you're answering the question, right? You might need to change it slightly. You might need to, again, edit it and change it a bit. Uh, and so that's something that, that, that I would say is an advice for you to, to keep in mind, right? Uh, and so, yes, you can generally reuse an essay, but make sure that you're answering the question uh, and make sure uh, that it's a good fit uh, of an answer for, the, for that particular essay. So, um, I think that is sort of more than my share of time. Buljana, do you, is there anything else that you wanted me to sort of chat about or talk about? I know this was supposed to be 45 minutes, so sorry for running yes, a little bit. Yes, yeah. I think we are right on time. Thank you, Jorge, very much. This was um, such a useful webinar. I think so many great questions that we covered almost, I think, every part of the, this this uh, college writing uh, uh, application uh, part of the, the whole application. Thank you very much again to everyone for asking such uh, uh, great questions. I hope we uh, actually helped uh, with with the, this part uh, and make it, it made this this uh, writing a bit easier because I know many students before they start writing they have this uh, period of just postponing until until they sit down and write that oh, first yeah. sentence. So I hope this will be useful for you to just um, open the common app even tonight and uh, and maybe try try brainstorming you know this is the first step uh, try to search for the best topic that you can write uh, uh, about use all the advice that Jorge gave you tonight um, and and start writing I think the best advice we can give is just uh, how I always say this to my students you know uh, how can I have a, a great essay if you write you know that you can listen and take advice but you have to sit down and start writing you know that's, you gotta do that's it. how that's you, right. you have to do it uh, thanks a lot. I just shared the website uh, where this webinar will be posted at the recording of the session. So you'll have the information or the presentation plus the uh, email if you have any questions afterwards. Again, thank you very much for your time, Jorge. Uh, hope we will stay in touch. Uh, and to everyone, have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you me. so much for the information. Thank uh -huh. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.